and welcome. My name is James Packman and I'm the Rector, the Senior Minister here at Holy Trinity Church in Nailsy and I'm delighted to welcome you to Sunday Catch Up. Sunday Catch Up is where we take the Bible reading and the talk from last Sunday but make it available on the internet to those who might be blessed and encouraged by it and I hope that you are. If you would like to be in contact with us, please do get in contact. The details are on our church website, uh, www.htnailsy.org.uk. Please let us know if you've got any questions or if there's any way in which we can help you at this time. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad you can. May God bless you today. The reading this evening uh, will be very well known to everybody. It's from Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, and I'm reading the first 12 verses. You'll find it starting on page 968 of the Church Bible. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad. Because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Well, it's lovely to see you on this uh, Remembrance Sunday. It, it's, it's an interesting contrast with this morning. As I stood here this morning, a whole big bank of people staring at me, wearing military fatigues. It's a very different experience when you're speaking. But it's great to see you, and we've had a, a good day as we've been remembering. Let's just pause now, and should we pray? Loving Father, we've just heard some radical words of our Lord Jesus Christ, really making us think about what it means to live as one of his followers, one of his disciples. I pray that as we think about some of that today, you would help us engage and live in the way that you want us to. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, on a day like today, Remembrance Sunday, um, we think about the pain of war, and it's hard not to think of Ukraine, isn't it? Because there is a place that we keep being told is on our doorstep in Europe, and there is war, and there is pain, and there is suffering. What would you do to bring about peace in Ukraine? Now, you might be there thinking, well, I I haven't really got much opportunity to bring about peace in Ukraine. Well, just imagine, work with me for a moment. Imagine President Zelensky called you up, okay, you, that's right, he chose you, and asked for some advice. What would you say to him is the best route towards peace in Ukraine? Now, I won't get you to put your hands up. Um, I imagine if I walked around Nailsy and asked people, I'd probably get a whole stack of different answers. I'm imagining I'd, I'd meet some people who'd say, you need to blow up the Kremlin. That's the answer, you've got to blow up the Kremlin. I imagine some other people might say, you've got to go for the compromise. You've got to, you've got to be willing to give up Crimea. You've got to be willing to give up the Donbass region and, and go for peace with compromise. I imagine other people would say, 
It's futile. You just got to lay down your weapons. You got to surrender. Bring peace that way. And I'd probably hear a lot of other suggestions as well. I can tell you one thing. I'm very, very glad I've never had that call from Ukraine. I mean, war is never simple, is it? War asks really complicated questions of us. Questions like, what is an acceptable price for peace? Hard questions. Another question, what really is peace? I mean, imagine for a moment that a ceasefire is agreed in Ukraine. But imagine you live in Ukraine and you live just near the border with Russia. Okay, do you sleep soundly that night? Or do you remain in fear? Do you really have peace? It seems to me that there are no winners when it comes to war and that peace is elusive. And, and that there's this lovely idea that we can hide away from war and we can hide away from news of war and find a quiet little place to escape from it all. But where is that? And even if we do escape things to do with the war, we do have our own battles in life, don't we? Other wars. Things that wage war on us or on those we love. We can't escape those. So what do we need? In a world with so little peace, what do we need? Well, the answer, thank you, Jesus, was given in our Bible reading, wasn't it? Because we're told we need peacemakers. Jesus himself said in verse 9 of Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Now, I find this really intriguing because usually those who are involved in peacemaking don't have a very peaceful life, do they? And Jesus doesn't say, blessed are those who get to enjoy peace. I think that's what we might say, isn't it? Blessed are you. If you have peace, he doesn't say that. Blessed is the peacemakers. And we know that sorting out conflicts is usually painful and hard work and anything but peaceful. It's a high calling to be a peacemaker. Whether it's trying to broker peace between countries on the global stage or making peace within a family or between friends. It's about it's about lessening those tensions and finding some solutions and getting people talking and finding ways for smooth communication. And that takes heaps of humility and it takes piles of patience. But blessed are the peacemakers, Jesus said. How can you disagree with that? We need peacemakers, don't we? Of course we do. Sometimes when we're, when we're in a conflict, we, it's hard to see the way forward. Peacemakers, they can take the heat out of a situation. They can bring a fresh perspective. Um, and this isn't just some sort of career decision, is it? You know, like some choose to be bricklayers and some choose to be accountants and, oh, others peacemakers. It doesn't work quite like that, is it? For most of us, the role of peacemaker is thrust on us, isn't it? You know, you don't think for one minute that your mate's marriage is going to go off the rails, but suddenly, and here you are in the middle of it. You didn't choose to get caught up in a family argument or in a neighbourhood feud. And I was thinking about prime ministers. Um, I've had a few recently. Um, but generally, prime ministers don't go into the job hoping that they'll get to de-escalate some global tension. Yeah, that's not really why they do the job. <clears throat> Normally what happens is they get woken up in the middle of the night and told, we've got an international problem. And they go, woohoo. <laughs> but unless we live in a place of perfect peace, there will be a lack of peace somewhere in our lives, somewhere around us, or maybe within us. 
And what's needed are peacemakers. Are you up for the job? Well, I may have put you off slightly by the way I sold it. Um, I've painted a picture that is less than glamorous. But, but let's not forget the flip side. It's amazing, isn't it? For all the hard work that it might take, when something as precious as peace emerges, that is beautiful. It is amazing. And it's truly worth the hard work. That's why it is a truly honourable role. An important role. In fact, when we seek peace, we are doing nothing less than walking in the footsteps of God himself. And I think that's exactly what Jesus is driving at when he says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Now, why? Why would a peacemaker be called a child of God? The answer, I think, is that a child shares the same characteristics as their parent. So Jesus is paying a massive compliment to peacemakers here. He's saying, you reflect the very character of God when you seek peace. Because God loves peace. In fact, that's why he sent his son, isn't it? Jesus. Peace on earth. Um, we're going to sing a lot about that in a few weeks' time, aren't we? Jesus came to bring peace. And God could have stayed distant and remote and just powerful, but he didn't. He cares too much about peace. Peace for you. Peace for me. Jesus' regular greeting as he went about was, peace be with you. But he didn't mean it like, how you doing? As in, not really interested in the answer, I'm just saying it. Uh, it wasn't just a fancy greeting. He meant it. Peace be with you. Wow. He offered it. He was given the title, the Prince of Peace. And he was willing to pay the price of peace with his own life. And so when Jesus says, peace be with you, he means it. And he offers us three types of peace. So let's just remind ourselves of those now. First of all, he offers us inner peace. Inner peace. Peace that comes from a lack of fear, a lack of worry. Peace that comes from knowing that someone greater than you has your back. Inner peace. Jesus offers another type of peace. Peace in heaven. Jesus gave us a glimpse of heaven when he was on earth because everywhere he went, sickness disappeared, evil disappeared, chaos disappeared. We are heading for that. It's called heaven. And it's a place of perfect peace. Jesus offers us inner peace and peace in heaven. But also, thirdly, peace with God, our maker. The God who most of us ignore who most of us turn our backs on, but, and who, well, who would have every right to ignore us and turn his back on us, but instead is willing to forgive us and grant us peace. Three types of peace that Jesus offers, three types of peace that can be ours. And if you're thinking, you know, what's the fourth one and has it got anything to do with Ukraine? No, you're right. God doesn't promise to stop the war in Ukraine today. He doesn't. He does let the bad choices of humanity play out. But in a broken world, like the one we live in, he holds out his hand and offers that hope, that peace, that love. Holds it out to anyone, anyone who will take it as it's freely offered. So when you choose to be a peacemaker, you choose to follow the example of Jesus. But, as Jesus found, not everyone chooses to accept your help. 
He knew the cost of rejection. And he still knows the cost of rejection from many people today. But some people will appreciate your help. And in God's grace, you might be able to make a difference as a peacemaker. You may be in a situation where you could bring more peace than there was before. In a relationship, in a family, in a friendship. As Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. That is a big challenge, isn't it? That's a huge challenge. So where are we going to start? Well, if you're in a situation like that, I would encourage you to start very simply with prayer. (laughs) It's always the best place to start. And in fact, you can be a peacemaker by interceding for peace, can't you? Start there. So pray. Pray for peace in Ukraine. And pray for peace in the marriage you know that's going wrong. Or when you see some conflict, pray. That's seeking peace. And then, if you are in a position to help, prayerfully see where God might need. As I've said, sometimes help help is unwelcome. We need to acknowledge that. Best not to force it. But where there is opportunity, gently and humbly, seek to bring some peace. You know, we, we don't want to be meddlers. That's not good. We don't want to increase tension. So we need to be wise. We need to know when to speak and when not to speak. And finally, let's not forget our call to be peacemakers for the kingdom of God as well. Because that is one peace that God wants to bring as well to many people. Jesus bought that peace with his blood. It was shed on the cross. Our job as peacemakers in that regard is to share that good news, isn't it? To tell people about Jesus the peacemaker so that they can respond to him in repentance and faith, so that they can know peace and the blessings of peace that come with knowing God. But this should all begin and continue with prayer. Prayer to our true God, who has that desire and power to bring about peace. May he use us to share his peace As Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Should we pray that God might use us to bring peace? Lord, this is a high calling and a hard calling. So give us courage to know what we can do to bring peace. Lord God, where we know of situations, help us to turn first to you in prayer for peace. And then where we have opportunity to make a difference, give us wisdom to know what to say and what not to say, what to do and what not to do. And help us gently, in your name, to offer help to bring peace. And Lord, we pray too that you would use us to bring the good news of Jesus, the peacemaker, that more people might enjoy eternal peace with you. Lord God, help us to love peace as much as you love peace and to make an impact for peace in the world around us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.